Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope everyone's doing great. In a lot of my recent posts and videos, I've talked about a challenge or a dilemma that I'm gonna be facing this year during the breeding season, which is in full swing, I might add. And that's in regards to grow out space. You see, this year versus last year, I'm down 270 gallons of just grow out space alone. That's quite a bit. And why am I down all that space? Well, it's simple. I have collectoritis. I keep buying more groups of plecos. Just this past year, I bought groups of L174s, L471s, L236s, L400s, and Cistrus Wabin Musters, L181s, and L183s. And I usually buy anywhere from 10 to 12 of each. And in a couple cases, I bought as many as 15. I also have three new groups of L134 leopard frog plecos that I didn't have last year. So that's all my grow out space. So what do you do? Well, in my case, when Petco has their dollar per gallon or 50% off sale, you go and buy more tanks. All right, YouTube, as noted in the intro, I've really been struggling with grow out space in my fish room here at TM Aquatics this year because I keep buying new groups of fish and putting those fish in all the tanks that I was using for grow outs last year. Now, a couple of these tanks I used last year for grow out space. This 40 breeder here and this 40 breeder here were used exclusively for growing out L134 leopard frog plecos last year. So what's in them this year? Well, let's actually start out on the top because all three of these tanks have new groups of plecos that were just added in 2022. The first group, the L471 mini snowball pleco up here on top. There's currently 14 of those fish in here. In this middle tank where I had used this tank for exclusive grow outs for L134s last year, now has 14 L174s in it. Really nice, small, high pan cistrus from the Rio Shingu. And then down here in this lower tank, another new group of fish, my L471s, or excuse me, L236s, my bad, L236s. Now there are four L46 zebra plecos in here as well that are growing out. And they'll be added to the adult zebra tank up there, the 33 long, but for right now, they're down here. Now these were L236 RB basics, but there are three or four of them that would be considered super whites. There's one of them in that little round cave right there. But just absolutely stunning fish. So all three groups of these fish are new to my fish room this year. Also this 40 long over here. Now this tank used to have my adult Scleromystax Barbados in it. And I got rid of those. I now have two new groups of plecos in this tank as well. The first are some long fin super reds. Now, for the record, I'm not a fan of any long fin fish at all, period, period, period. However, people ask me for these all the time. I found a really nice group of long fin super reds and decided I would add some to the fish room, have a few spawns and see how well they do and how well they sell. There are also the primary resident of this tank, which we're not gonna see because they're all hiding, I already checked, are my L183 Starlight Plecos. They're still growing out. They're a ways away from being ready to breed, but these are both new groups of fish here in my fish room purchased this past year in 2022. All right, another new group of Plecos added to the fish room in 2022, albeit we're not back in the fish room per se. We are out in the rec room but I did add a group of L181 peppermint plecos. And there are nine of them in this tank. 
These were back in the fish room at one point, but I recently moved them out to the rec room because I am so desperate for space back in the fish room. I really had nowhere else to move them. I prefer all my plecos to be back in the fish room, but there just weren't any other options available. So that is why we moved the L181s out here into the rec room into this 75 gallon tank. Couple more groups of new fish added to the fish room here in 2022. Couple new groups of L134 leopard frog plecos. Now these were all out in my 120 gallon in the rec room, but I have found that those large super colonies just don't do very well. And for breeding purposes, I suggest and recommend much smaller groups, 10 or less. In this tank, there are seven adults. And in this deep cave where you can see that tail wiggling, he's wiggling because he's got a girlfriend in his cave and hopefully they spawn tonight. Over here in this tank, there are eight. And in this top deep cave right there, center frame, there is a male with a bunch of wigglers in his tank or in his cave. Up here in the fry box, there are eight juveniles that hatched from a previous spawn. But both of these groups are new to the fish room as well. And so are these 40 breeders. I used to have seven 10 gallon tanks up here that were used exclusively for grow out. There's no longer here in the fish room. All right, in this rack here, I have 360 breeders. 360 breeders. Now the top tank has my group of queen arabesque, my L260s. And these were all spawned here in the fish room at TM Aquatics. And they are not spawning for me yet. But these two lower tanks, last year, both of these were being used exclusively for grow outs. In this middle 60 breeder, I had like 300 Corydoras in here at one point. I think there were like seven species of Corydoras in here growing out. And then in that bottom tank, I had like 100 Scleromystax barbatus. So both these were being used for grow out as well. So overall, these two 60 breeders, the seven 10 gallon tanks up here, and the 240 breeders over here were all being used for grow out tanks last year that are now occupied by other fish. 270 gallons. Now this middle 60 breeder here now has a group of 14 L134 leopard frog plecos. And these were all spawned here in my fish room and just a group of fish that I hand selected to keep and start a new group with. And then also in here, you can see I'm hanging upside down on that slate. I have 10 Ancestrous Wobbin Musters in here as well. So the bio load in this tank is quite heavy and I need to do something about that sooner than later. And I do have a plan for that, but that's what we have in this middle 60 breeder that used to have a bunch of Corydoras juveniles growing out in it. And then down here, I have 11 L400s in here. And these are all new fish. They're another black and white worm lined fish. But their patterns can uh, be varied significantly varied as they reach maturity, but there's 11 L400s in this tank here and another high pan cistrus from the Rio Jingu. So what are we doing for girl at space this year? Well, we still have our five 20 gallon tanks over here and these are on full auto water change system. We have a bunch of Scleromystax Barbatus in here. We have a bunch of Corydoras Kanakis in here. There's a bunch in here, trust me, they're all back in the corner. 
we have a bunch of daisies blue rice fish here and then the Corydoras in here there's two different types there are a bunch of Corydoras bozemani in here there's about 50 Corydoras bozemani and then there's about a half a dozen Corydoras duplicarius in this tank here we have a bunch of Corydoras schultzi black oftentimes incorrectly referred to as the black Venezuelan and then over in this tank we have a bunch of Praycox rainbow fish there's one duplicarius one Corydoras bozemani and some lemon blue-eyed longfin bushy nose plecos that I picked up from my brother but all five of these 20 gallon tanks is pretty much full which leaves us a dilemma again we have CW49 juveniles in this fry box we only have 10 or 11 at this point but these are the L or excuse me CW49 black diamonds need to find a home for them down here I did have my first green laser spawn of the year really had really bad fertility issues with it though only ended up with about a dozen and a half green laser juveniles so we got some green lasers coming up and up here we have another spawn of Corydoras bozeman I think there's I don't know 10 to 12 or something like that in the fry box we still have to find a place for them over here in this two and a half we have more daisy blue rice fish and the only reason I'm raising these Praycox Rainbow and Daisy Blue Rice Fish is to have a little bit of um, variety when I sell at fish swaps, just to have something a little bit different. But we do have the five 20 gallon tanks over there, and then I have this 40 gallon breeder down here that was exclusively or is exclusively for grow out. But this tank is at capacity. I have I think 12 or 13 you can see it, the orange down in there I have 12 or 13 397s L397 plecos in here and they're a little bit bigger size and then if you look back in the corner on the um, silicone maybe back over here there's even more There's some up here. They're just all over if you look real close. We have a bunch of L134 leopard frog plecos and L494s. There are 36 L134s in here. There are 56 L494s. And then there are the 13 L or yeah L 397s so this tank is bursting at the seam as it is and we have 134s in here 134s in there a new trapping over there we have more wigglers in here with the dad I don't know if we'll get a shot of these or not I don't want to torture too much but he's got a bunch of juveniles or fry in that cave right there so yeah we need more grow out space so let's talk about what we did so over here next to my double 75 rack this used to be a plastic shelf in fact it was that black plastic shelf right there which I slid over to the left but in its place there was one of these white plastic shelves and I fabricated a new 2x4 and 2x6 stand for two new 40 breeders and these are going to be used exclusively for grow outs up on top I have my air pumps I have a Danner AP100 a diaphragm pump is my main pump and then I have a Gemco LPH 80 linear piston pump as my backup a couple of containers of just odd and end fish room supplies and what I did is 
I didn't have any plywood on hand, so rather than going out and buying new plywood, I just repurposed a couple of the, the shelves, because they fit and they're perfect. Just repurposed a couple of those shelves so I could set things on them and get them out of the way. So here are the two new 40 breeders. I just added water to this tank today. This one has been up and running for a while. And we have a bunch of Zis fry boxes in it. We have a Zis egg tumbler, a couple of sponge filters, pool filter sand, the basics. We have a heater controller on it up there. But in these fry boxes, this one here, I have a hundred and plus eggs of green laser Corydoras. Just had another Corydoras spawn, green lasers. These ones look a little bit better. I think we're going to have a much better hatch. Looks like uh, not quite the fertility issue that the last hatch had. But there's quite a bunch of green laser eggs in there. In this tank here, in this fry box here, there are four. You can see the big yellow spots. Four L134s. That this guy kicked out. Some of the eggs hatched earlier than the others, and he ended up kicking those four out for whatever reason. He did that last spawn as well. So hopefully he gets it figured out, but I think he gets a little freaked out when the eggs start wiggling around and hatching. And then in this egg tumbler, there are more green laser eggs. So we have a bunch of green lasers, L134s, green laser eggs, and I'll be moving those L1 or L494s, the L134s, and the remainder out of that spawn. And if these guys hatch, all those will be in this top 40 breeder. And then I have one down here. Um, again, just water added. I just got the heater and the heater controller are in that box there. I'll get that hooked up. And then I'm waiting for some new air valves so I can add a couple more drops from my central air system down here behind the rack and have a couple sponge filters in that tank as well. But, but that's what we did. Um, in order to do this though, I had to go through the three shelves that I have down here in the storage room with fish stuff and I had to purge enough stuff out of the fish room that was equal to the space that these new 40 breeders are taking up. As I told the wife, I'm not going to take up any more space here in the fish room that I'm not already occupying. And technically, since this was my shelf with my fish room stuff on it, how I utilize that space, well, just build a new rack shelf combo and use it for grow space. So that's what I'm doing. That's what we've added here in the fish room. A couple new 40 breeders, and I couldn't be happier. Now, this shelf or this rack, a little different construction than how I normally make stands. The only shelf that is carrying any load is this two by six shelf here, and that is being held up with a bunch of leg bolts and then a few construction screws, of course. This bottom tank is just sitting on a um, frame of two by fours directly on the concrete so there's no load down there and then these are two by sh four shelves up here that again really don't carry a lot of weight and they're just being held in place with construction screws but normally i'm all about the dado cut stands i like doing the dado cut stands but it just wasn't necessary with what my plans were for this shelf here and again, the only shelf that's carrying weight is this two by six shelf and it's being held in place with um, 516, it's a 516, yeah, 516, um, or it's three eighths, three eighths, might be three eighths, three eighths inch wide uh, leg bolts. So more than enough strength to hold the, the 350 pounds here. So anyways, that's the new addition here at TM Aquatics. All right, YouTube. Well, we have the two new 40 breeders here in the fish room at TM Aquatics exclusively for grow outs. But this is by no means a permanent solution here. I'm going to have to do something different because when I think about it, bigger picture, only three of my 
groups of Plecos are spawning for me right now. The L134s, the L494s, and the L397s. And the 397s right now are kind of iffy because the male's been really bad with the eggs lately, and that's a whole other issue. But I still have so many other Plecos that haven't spawned, started spawning yet. Once they start spawning, 240 breeders is not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it at all. Now, these help. They take a little bit of the pressure off, but I'm still down 190 gallons from what I used last year. So, long-term plans, long-term long solution. I don't have those answers yet. I guess stay tuned for that. But I do know one thing. I'm going to have to make some additional changes here. And the fish room is going to have to continue to evolve as it has over the past five, six years. So anyway, stay tuned. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope everyone has a fantastic evening. I appreciate each and every one of you taking time out of your day to stop by my channel and watch my video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them down below. Hit the like button on your way out. And if you haven't done so already, I hope I've earned your subscription. So please consider hitting that subscribe button and following along on the TM Aquatics journey. Anyways, till the next one, appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great night and we'll catch you later.